Okay. Let's read the temperature. Let's read uh, get a reading off. This is a temperature sensor off a 280Z, part of the EFI control system. This reads the temperature inside the thermostat housing and basically tells the uh, tells the computer how cold your engine is and therefore if it's cold, it, it gives it a richer mixture. If it's warmed up, it's a leaner mixture. Um, so anybody's having any problems understanding how to read these. Typical multimeter. This is what they call an auto ranging multimeter. That means I have a ohms setting here, which I don't have to put a range on. It's going to automatically define what range. Some cheaper multimeters might have you know, like zero to a thousand or one k, or maybe zero to you know ten k or hundred k, all that kind of stuff. But hopefully, if you get an auto ranger, it's a little bit easier to deal with. You just put it in the ohm section. First thing you always want to do is check your meter. So we will go ahead and do that right now. Shorting these out, 0 0.6, 0 .6. it'll go down to zero if I hold this tightly enough. But basically, we want to make sure that the thing is reading, and that's an open reading. Okay, that means there's infinite resistance. There, there's essentially no connection between these two, and that's no resistance. We're su almost superconducting here. Now, uh, to read the thing here, all you have to do. As you see the back of that, you just jam these pins in here and you hold it there. And you look at the meter. And the meter says open. Try it again. But that's because the pins on here are extremely crooked. If I scrape around and move it around a whole bunch, I can get a reading. But if your pins are dirty, that's what it's going to look like. All right. I'll, I'll try to move with one hand. See if I can get a if I can get through the crow. You probably can't. So we're gonna make it easy. Why, why fight it? Just get yourself some uh, brushes. These are brushes you use for cleaning paint guns, but I think they're pretty good for this too. As best you can. If you have some contact cleaner, that would help too. I don't have it handy sitting here at my desk, but there's all kinds of mung and goo just from that little bit of cleaning right there. Yeah, but you would get a, an electrical contact cleaner ideally and cleans up nice and bright. Do happen to have a little bit of this stuff handy. I'm not recommending it, but it's sitting here and it's handy. So, there. just use a little bit of that stuff there. Not the ideal cleaning solution, but it's a solvent. Basically, just in there and try to clean it up as best you can. Now, if you had some alligator clips, you could just clip the clip leads in there and get a real good contact. But without them, there's another thing you could do is you could actually get the proper connector that plugs on this by a spare one. But now let's see if I can get these uh, leads to reading. And that's assuming this temperature sensor is even good. And I don't even know that. Oh, there we go. Okay, and 1.5. No, oh, you couldn't see it, but the meter was reading. Let's see if we can get all this on the same screen here. Let's try this. I'm going to try to do this. I'm going to hold it. Oh. You're just going to have to trust me that I'm getting these things on this pin. So I'm at uh, hold still. Can't quite hold it on there. I'm gonna try coming in from a different angle. Maybe put it on the side. The side's not good because you get such a small contact patch. That's a hundred and one point nine K. Okay, 
1.9 at this 1800 ohm, which so I think is probably about right for, for the temperature we're operating at here. So the key to getting this thing to work is first verify your meter works, then get in there and clean those contacts up real well, because if you're just trying to probe like this, you got to kind of dig through the corrosion if it's there. Scraping off the corrosion makes that digging part a little, a little bit easier. That also tells you why if this thing's corroded and you just plug it into your wiring harness, you have a good chance of it not working, which is why it's so important to get all this stuff super clean. Uh, you can also use another really good tool for this, it probably works better than these brushes, is like a little one of those like an emery board that your, that your wife uses to do her nails. You just take that in there and just kind of polish off those either side of those pens that are in there, those flat pens, get that nice and clean. There's stuff called deoxid, and there's a variety of other chemicals that do the same thing to kind of break off that corrosion bond. But that's the problem you're running into. So if you're not getting readings when you hook your meter and your meter's working when you short the leads, it's a good chance the whole problem is you just got enough corrosion that you're just not piercing it with the, uh, with the test lead. That's all for now. Thanks.